Today, we'll go through some very important tricks to solve questions regarding capacitors in a circuit. Let me show you the final circuit that we will be dealing with toward the end of this video. Before we move ahead, let's first get a feel of what a capacitor really does. A capacitor is like a tiny charge bucket. It stores charge on its plates, but it doesn't allow current to pass through it directly, like a wire. Instead, it builds up charge, which creates a voltage across its plates. This voltage is given by V equals Q divided by C, where Q is the charge stored at any given time and C is the capacitance. Now, if a current is flowing through a resistor and then reaching the capacitor, the resistor eats up voltage as usual. Voltage drops in the direction of the current and is given by V equals I times R. Meanwhile, the capacitor develops its own voltage as it gets charged, and this voltage grows slowly over time, fighting against the battery. So while the resistor drops voltage instantly, the capacitor builds it up gradually, and therefore the voltage developed across it is a function of time. We begin with the charging of a capacitor when it is initially uncharged. A DC voltage source is connected in series with a resistor R, a capacitor C, and a switch. At time T equals zero, we close the switch. Since initially the capacitor has no charge, it behaves like a wire. As time progresses, charge starts building on the capacitor. Let's assume that at some general time, T, the charge on the capacitor, is Q and current flowing in the circuit is I. Now we write the potential equation of this circuit using Kirchhoff's law. The voltage drop across the capacitor is Q divided by C, and across the resistor is I multiplied by R. So we get V minus voltage drop across capacitor, or Q over C minus voltage drop across resistor, or IR equals zero. Now here's the key idea. Current is nothing but how fast the charge is changing with respect to time. So we replace I with dQ by dt. This turns our loop equation into a differential equation involving just Q and t, which we can now solve using basic integration. Take this on the right side. Now multiply by C on all sides to get CV minus Q equals RC times dQ over dt. Take this dt over rc here, and this term here to get this. Now simply integrate on both sides. What will be the limits of the integration? At time t equals zero, the charge is zero, because the capacitor is initially uncharged, and the upper limit is some general time t and corresponding charge q. On solving this simple integral, we get q equals cv times one minus e raised to minus t over rc. We can replace this cv by q0. This q0 equals cv is the maximum possible charge on the capacitor. The product r multiplied by c is known as the time constant and is denoted by the Greek letter tau. So the expression for q will become like this. If we put t equals r multiplied by c or tau into the equation, then the exponential becomes e raised to the power minus 1, which is approximately 0 0.37. So 1 minus that is approximately 0 0.63. That means after one time constant, the capacitor is 63% charged. This equation shows that charging is exponential, and its graph looks somewhat like this. Now, current in this circuit will be dq by dt or just differentiate this to get i at any time, t as q0 over tau times e raised to minus t over tau or v by r times e raised to minus t over rc. So as time tends to infinity, the exponential term becomes zero and charge approaches q0. That state is called steady state, where the capacitor is fully charged and thus the current in the circuit becomes zero. That means current starts from its maximum value of V over R at time T 
equals zero and gradually drops to zero at steady state. This is also very helpful during problem solving. At time zero, we treat the capacitor like a wire. So current is maximum and equals V divided by R. As time progresses, current decreases. At steady state, we treat the capacitor like an open circuit. No current flows and the resistor is bypassed. This lets us solve questions quickly using pure Ohm's law. Now, let's understand the discharging case. Suppose we have a capacitor that is already charged. Say, we had earlier connected it to a battery and now it holds some charge and voltage across its plates. If we now remove the battery and simply connect this charged capacitor across a resistor, then the capacitor starts releasing its stored energy. This stored charge begins to flow through the resistor, creating a current in the circuit. But unlike a battery, the voltage of the capacitor keeps dropping as it discharges, because it's losing charge over time. So, while charging stores energy, discharging is like using that stored energy to power something for a short time. That's why capacitors can act like temporary batteries in many circuits, giving quick bursts of power and then fading out. At time T, the charge becomes Q, and current I flows. Also, initially charge is some Q zero. Since they are in the same loop, we write voltage drop across the capacitor or minus Q divided by C minus voltage drop across resistor or I multiplied by R equals zero. Now write I as dQ by dt and integrate. Take it this side. Then minus dt over RC will be equal to dQ over Q. Limits of the integration will be at t equals zero, Q is Q zero, and at some time t we have Q. Finally, after solving we get Q equals Q zero multiplied by E raised to minus T divided by RC. That means charge decreases exponentially. At one time constant, about 37% of charge remains. These are the key facts to remember in discharging. Now let's talk about a trick to find charge across capacitors in tricky circuits like this one. I know the circuit looks complicated, but don't panic because now you have all the tools needed to solve this easily. The charge Q of this capacitor is still equal to Q zero multiplied by one minus E raised to minus T divided by R equivalent multiplied by C. First, in order to find this Q zero, just redraw the circuit assuming the capacitor is replaced by an open wire. That is, no current flows through it in steady state. Then find the voltage across this capacitor, then multiply it with C, and you get the maximum charge stored by this capacitor. Now, look at this loop. If we pass a current I from the battery, then all the current will travel in this loop itself, and no current will pass through this loop, because this is an open circuit. So the loop equation will be V minus I R minus I times 2 R, or V equals 3 times I R. So I equals V over three times R. Therefore, the voltage difference across this terminal, which will be the same as the voltage drop across this resistor, will be I time R or V by three. This will be the same voltage across this capacitor because no current passes through this loop, and therefore this resistor will be useless at steady state. So Q zero, or the maximum charge stored in this capacitor at steady state, will be C multiplied by V divided by three. Then calculate resistance R equivalent as seen by the capacitor. To do that, we remove the battery and replace it with a wire and solve for R equivalent across these two terminals. Both these resistors are in parallel. So what will be the equivalent resistor of R and 2R in parallel? For that, we do R times 2R divided by R plus 2R which gives 2R by 3. Now this 2R by 3 is in series with this 3R, and thus the equivalent will be addition of both of them, which gives 11R by 3. This is the R equivalent across these two terminals. 
Therefore, the charge across this capacitor will be CV by 3 times 1 minus E raised to minus 3T over 11 times RC, and that's it. The time constant of this circuit will be R equivalent times C, or this. If you like this video, please don't shy away from giving it a like, as it's absolutely free. Also, you can support my work by either becoming a Patreon or by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.